Up until now, in all of the examples we have considered, we assume that all players know all relevant information for a game. What do I mean by this? Let's look at the coordination game again. So remember the story behind this game was that the players, player one and player two, had to meet up. They chose to meet up, but they forgot where they agreed on going, and they can either go to concert C or sporting event S. And the preferences, the payoffs, show that they prefer to go to an event together, but player two actually prefers to go to a concert together, while player one prefers to go to a sporting event together. Now, in this game, we assume that all players knew the payoffs. They knew that player two, for example, knew that player one would get a utility of one if they both went to a concert, and that player one would get a utility of two or a payoff of two if they both went to a sporting event. However, there's another twist on the story that we can add. We can say that, okay, player two always wants to meet up, no matter what, except player two is unsure about player one. He doesn't really know if player one likes player two. So it might be the case that player one actually prefers to go to the opposite place as player two. So if that's the case, I'm gonna do player one here and we'll call it the good guy because he wants to meet up. And this could be player one here, we'll call him the bad guy. It can be that the payoffs are actually this. In this case, player one being the bad guy doesn't want to meet up with player two. We see that whenever they meet up, he gets a payoff of zero. But if he happens to go to a different place, he'll get a payoff of two. And we will say that the probability, we'll use Q because we have a lot of P's going on here. So we'll let Q is equal, be equal to the probability that player one is the good guy. And just for the heck of it, from here on out, we'll assume that this probability is 0.5. So there's a 50-50 chance that player one wants to meet up being over here versus wanting to go to the event by himself. So the key here is that player two does not observe. He does not know which one of these two, what I'll call types, player one is. This introduces the concept of what is known as a Bayesian game. Now the mathematics and the notation for a Bayesian game are, are quite cumbersome and they're beyond the scope of this tutorial. However, this provides a general gist of what a Bayesian game is meant to encapsulate. What a Bayesian game is meant to capture. It's meant to capture uncertainty in a game. When one of the players, in this case it's player two, is uncertain about some element of the game. Now, remember a definition of a game is players, actions, and payoffs. What you see from these two game matrices, these two normal form games, is that player one's payoff depends on what type he is. If he's the good guy, well then he prefers to meet up and if they both play CC, player one gets one. But if he's the bad guy, he doesn't want to meet up. They both go to CC, he gets zero, okay? So we see now that payoffs can depend on types. Uh, again, I'm not gonna go through the math to exactly show what that means, but we see that the utility will depend on what type the player is. The other thing that, that changes in a Bayesian game is the strategy. Now, player two does not know what type player one is, but player one will know what type he is. So, player one's action space has to specify what he will do for all possible types. So, let's go ahead and list out player one's new action space. First of all, note that player two's action space is just C or S. He doesn't observe anything, he doesn't get a type, so he can only choose to go to the concert or go to the sporting event. But player one's action space is actually augmented. It now actually has four actions, and I'm gonna go through and list them all. The key here is to realize that player one's action has to specify what player one will do for both types. 
So let's list his actions. I'm going to say a1, a11, player one's first action is C if P G C if P one B. So what this says is player one's first action is to say go to the concert if he wants to meet up and go to the concert if he doesn't want to meet up. Okay, I'm not saying anything about this being an equilibrium action, we're just listing the actions. So A12, player one's second action. This says player one's sex second action is to go to the concert if he is the good type, P1G, but go to the sporting event if he is the bad type. This says player one's third action is to go to the sporting event if he is the good type or go to the concert if he is the bad type. And finally, player one's last action this says player one's fourth action is to go to the sporting event if he is the good type p1g if he wants to meet up and go to the sporting event if he's the bad type so what we see here is that player one's actions specify what he will do for each of his possible types so in this case player one has four actions Again, a Nash equilibrium, what we'll call a Bayesian Nash equilibrium of this game is an action of player one and player two. So one of player two's two actions and one of player one's four actions such that neither player has an incentive to change their action. In the next lesson, we're going to go through and find a Nash equilibrium of this game.